We're going to do a problem of uh, conservation of angular momentum, and uh, it's an interesting one. You have a rolling object here. We can have it uh, be a spear or a cylinder, a hollow spear, hollow cylinder, whatever we choose. So let's say it was a solid spear. The solid spear is rolling nicely, pure rolling motion. It comes and it hits a rod, a uniform rod, which is pivoted about a point, a distance L from the ground, and it's the top of the rod. This is, happens to be the top of the rod right here. And so it comes and it hits it, and then the rod is going to go up like that, and then uh, the ball is probably going to slow down. So after the collision, you're going to have a situation where the rod is going to have some uh, omega final, <coughs> and then the ball is going to be rolling with a certain final velocity. So I want to know what's the final velocity of the ball after the collision, what's the omega final of the rod after the collision, and I would also like to know to what height the rod rises, what, to what angle rises. Okay. So what uh, quantities are conserved in this case? In any kind of uh, general collision problem where you have angular momentum, linear momentum, kinetic energy involved, you can have either three of these all conserved, or you can just have kinetic energy conserved, or you can have just angular momentum conserved, or just linear momentum. In this case, we can't have linear momentum conserved because the rod is pivoted about the top point. So when this hits this, the rod is not free to translate. So linear momentum cannot be conserved. What other things can be conserved? You can have kinetic energy conserved. If the collision happens to be uh, elastic, then therefore uh, kinetic energy can be conserved. So if the problem has two unknowns, omega final and B final, it's probably going to mean that you have two um, two quantities conserved. Otherwise, we would have no way of solving for this. So we don't know omega final, we don't know B final, and so therefore there has to be two quantities conserved. So we're going to have kinetic energy conserved and angular momentum conserved. So kinetic energy initial equals kinetic energy final. So kinetic energy initial of the, of the solid sphere, you have uh, energy of rotation plus translational energy, right? So let's come up with an equation for what's the total kinetic energy of the uh, sphere. You have half mv squared plus half i omega squared. The moment of inertia of a solid sphere is two-fifths mr squared. Two-fifths mr squared. Right? And so we're going to argue that uh, two, two cancel, one half mv squared plus one-fifth m. And then r squared omega squared is the same as v squared. So 1 half mv squared plus 1 fifth mv squared. And so the total kinetic energy for a solid sphere that's rolling purely without any slippage is equal to, uh, this is going to be 5 plus 2, 7 over 10 mv squared. So you're going to have here, initial kinetic energy is 7 tenths mass of the uh, uh, solid sphere times VCM of the solid sphere squared and then this one doesn't have initial kinetic energy, right? And that's equal to the kinetic energy of the solid sphere after the collision 7 tenths MV final squared plus the kinetic energy of uh, rotation of the rod which is one half i of the rod omega final squared. <coughs> i of the rod is equal to what? Well, if it's pivoted above the end point, the mass of the rod, let's say, is, uh, we'll call it little m. So the moment of inertia of a rod, a uniform rod, above the end is one third ml squared. So we have seven tenths mvcm squared is 7 tenths mv final squared plus 1 half 1 third little m times
times L squared times omega final squared. And then, therefore, one half of one third is going to be what? One sixth. So we'll leave that as it is. That's the kinetic energy equation. How about the angular momentum? So the initial um, uh, solid sphere has angular, uh, two kinds of angular momentum. It has angular momentum of rotation, so it's rotating this way, so it's into the board, right? And it has angular momentum due to the fact that it's hitting the uh, rod uh, away from its center of mass, right? So it's going to make the rod uh, spin. So what's the angular momentum that it has with respect to the uh, rod? Well, you have to ask yourself around, one po around what point is the rod going to spin or rotate after it has been hit by the sphere? Once the sphere hits the rod, right, it's going to be rotating about the pivot point, right? So this is R P, right? So the angular momentum that it has by virtue of the fact that it's hitting the rod away from the center of mass of the rod is L is equal to L initial R crossed into P, right? And so which direction is that? R crossed into P, out of the board. Uh -huh. So uh, some vector analysis really brings this out to light. So let's, for now, let's define out of the board as being positive, okay? So initially, it has out of the board angular momentum due to the fact that it's hitting the rod away from its center. See, if it had hit the rod exactly at the center of the rod, uh, imagine if the center of the rod, imagine it was something like this. Imagine it was rolling and then the rod was uh, at the end of a table like this. If it had hit the rod at the center of the rod, right, then it would have no angular momentum due to the fact that it's hitting it away from its center. So that portion of the angular momentum would be zero. It would hit the rod, and then the rod would spin up around the pivot point like that, and the solution would be a little bit easier. Okay, so the angular momentum that it has due to this is R crossed into P. So we have L initial R, which is this, this one, times P which is uh, M times uh, B center of mass. We call this one B center of mass. Times sine of this angle, right? Sine of this angle, <coughs> which, uh, which is, uh, which we've done actually in previous problems that I've shown you how to do that. We have R sine of theta, that's gonna give us this distance, right? So R sine of theta. So right now, let's not put the vector sign. It's just, uh, we're just worried about the magnitude. So R M B sine theta. That's the angular momentum out of the board. Then it has angular momentum into the board due to the fact that it's rotating. So that's equal to into the board. So negative I omega initial. That's the I of the sphere. That's equal to I final. I final. After the uh, collision, this guy is still rotating this way. Let's assume it's still rotating forward, right? So it has initial angle, it's, it has final angular momentum into the board. So that's negative i omega final. And then this one is rotating, is spinning this way, right? So it has angular momentum out of the board, right? So that's positive. So you have positive. I prime omega final. Uh, we have to also remember that after the collision, not only does it have uh, angular momentum because it's spinning, and the rod has angular momentum because it's spinning, but the sphere also has angular momentum because it's translating, right? And that one's gonna be the out of the board, right? So it's gonna be pretty much the similar to this one here, the initial, but except it's going to be final. It's going to be R crossed into P after the collision. So that's going to be positive. And so that's going to be R M B final sine theta. 
instead of VCM.